everyone. I'm here to talk about the bartending. So, a bartending is a duty, responsibility, and a work. Bartending is providing an excellent service to a guest that enters to a bar. How can we say that he or she is a good bartender? A good bartender is one who is always ready to greet a guest, accommodate their needs, and serve them with respect and professionalism. When providing service to a patron, the bartender should always maintain a cheerful and kind attitude, being able to quickly take a guest order, prepare the guest order, and complete the transaction in a timing manner that precise. Approach the guests as they enter to your establishment and greet them with a smile. So now, let's proceed to the bar tools and equipment. In this area, this is important for a bartender to have a tools so that they can produce a fantastic drink. So here are tools that every bartender should have. The first is the bar spoon. A spoon with a long handle used for stirring drinks. You can also use the back of the spoon for layering drinks. Bar towel. A bar towel is a piece of absorbent fabric used for drying or wiping a surface. The a bartender's book. This is indispensable guide breaks down bartending into bar essentials techniques and then applies them to building the best drinks. The next is the blender. Are pretty much intended to perform just one function that is turned to ice, liquid, and sometimes fruit into creamy, smooth, frozen cocktails. Of course, most bar blenders can do more than that, but creating frozen drinks is their primary function. Heavy duty blenders are best for blending mixed drinks. Bakit heavy duty blender ang gamitin natin at hindi yung ordinary blender lang? Heavy duty blender is mas mapadali niya mapulverize yung ice compared sa ibang, ibang klase ng blender. If your equipment are in high quality, mas mapapadali yung service mo. The next is the bottle opener. A device that removes the bottle cup from the bottle. The next is the can opener and can punch. Can opener or tin opener are used to open cans or to remove one end of a can. Can punch is a tool that makes a hole in juice cans. Champagne or wine stopper. Wine stopper, an essential wine accessory to close leftover wine bottles before refrigerating them. Wine stopper are used because it is hard to put the original cork back into the bottleneck. Champagne stopper, a special stopper with two wings that clamps over the lip of a champagne bottle. It keeps the champagne sparkling. The vacuum wine stopper. This device vacuum seals the wine, which make it last for about 7 to 14 days. The citrus zester or stripper. A tool that cuts 1 fourth inch wide strips of citrus rinds. Cocktail muddler. A bartender's tool used like a pestle to mash or muddle fruits, herbs, and spices in the bottom of the glass to release their flavors. A cocktail shaker. They are very useful for shaking your mixed drinks. We have three kinds of shakers. The standard cocktail shaker is an all-in-one solution consisting of three parts, a metal tin, cap, and belt-in strainer. 
You don't even need a jigger to measure recipe's volume, as the cup is usually one ounce. The Boston Shaker consists of a shaking metal tin, a mixing glass tin, but has no built-in strainer. For the Boston Shaker, a strainer must be purchased separately, which is the Hawthorne strainer. And the last one is the French Parisian Shaker. It's in between the cobbler and Boston Shaker. It has the shape of a cobbler, but like the Boston, it messes the built-in strainer. Though the Parisian is built as the cobbler, it is a bit easier to open than the cobbler. Let's move on to the cocktail strainer. The Hawthorne strainer is the most popular type of cocktail strainer with a little spring around the edge, which fits perfectly into a shaking tin and many mixing glasses that, and helps to strain out little, spe little pieces of ice and other solids. Hawthorne strainer is also adjustable you can slide on the top of your shaking tin to leave more or less gop when pouring your cocktail in the glass. The next is the julep strainer. An oval shape with large hole, mainly intended to strain stirred drinks, perfectly fits in the mixing glass where is it held with the help of pressure of bartender's fingers. The next is the fine mesh strainer. Unfortunately, Hawthorne strainer is not able to capture everything. So, for the best results, use your Hawthorne strainer along with the fine mesh strainer. Especially for the cocktail without tiny pieces of ice. Let's move on to the next. The corkscrew or the wine stopper. A device for pulling corks from bottles consisting of spiral metal rod that is inserted into the cork and a handle that extracts it. Next is the ice bucket. Ice bucket is a container that holds the ice and of course the tongue. A tool to pick up ice cubes for your drinks. Next is the jigger or the measurer. A jigger, alcohol jigger or bar jigger is an hourglass shaped bartender's measuring tool used to ensure that they can pour accurate amount of alcohol into every drink. Usually made of metal and sometimes plastic. Jigger contains two different measuring amounts, one on either side of the hourglass. A citrus reamer, also known as a lemon reamer, or simply a reamer, is a small kitchen utensil used to extract the juice from a lemon or other citrus fruit. Next is the knife and cutting board to cut fruits and garnishes. Measuring cup used to measure volume of liquid. Measuring spoon used to measure a small amount of ingredients like spices and sugar. Juice to work around potential hazard while staying safe and comfortable throughout your exhaustive shift, here are the kind of shoes that bartenders should wear and, with, and the features to look out for. Sleep resistance, water resistance, comfort, ventilation, and style. Feed pourer or bottle pourer is a pourer that has high significance in bartending and cocktail culture. Its main function is to facilitate the flow of liquid through bottle and helps in controlling the amount of liquid being poured. 
speed pour is like a modernized version of funnel. Facts about cocktail drinks. Cocktail. The term cocktail was even first seen in a British newspaper printed March of 1798. But the term was really defined as we know it until 1806 when the Balance and Colombian Respiratory of Hudson, New York pinned the cocktail down to what we follow today. A stimulating liquor composed of any kind of sugar, water, and bitter. Vulgarly called a bitter sling. The sling had actually predated the cocktail, basically the same thing made without bitter. The Bloody Mary's origin myths are as murky as the tomato juice it's made of. But cocktail historians generally agree the one storyline probably deviates the least from the truth. This involved a bartender named Fernand Pete Picot, who conceived of a rudimentary version in the early 1920s while working at the famed Harry's New York Bar in Paris. After prohibition, Picot brought the drink to Manhattan when he presided over the Dapper King Cole Bar at the St. Regis Hotel. For a time, the cocktail was rechristened the Red Snapper in a nod to more delicate American sensibilities. And while at the St. Regis, Pipiot doled up the tomato juice concoction with various, various rather, seasonings like horseradish, Tabasco sauce, lemon juice, and celery, and salt. In cut on, the classic was born. Of course, other theories persist. The most fanciful is that the Bloody Mary dates to the rule of ruthless Queen Mary I of England in the middle 1550s. The tomato juice, according to the always reliable weekly world news, represent the blood spilled while the vodka a fire water is symbolic of the queen's brutal means of executing the martyrs. The comedian George Jessel also claims he invented the drink in 1939. The Bloody Mary is not a spirit-driven drink, and that's part of the appeal. Especially among weekend home bartenders, the tomato juice and vodka from a blank canvas on which one makes create freehand artistry in the medium of spices, more, harsh, more horseradish or black pepper for some, a touch of clam juice. For others, it's a cocktail that doesn't require a jigger rather than a mockbicum of culinary instinct. It is a fine mixology what crock pot Chicken Supreme as to the Lee Cordon Bleu. Did you know that January 1st is the National Bloody Mary Day? Probably because of all the hangover Probably because of all the hangovers being nursed on the day after New Year's Eve. Daiquiri Daiquiri is the mixed drink developed in or around 1898 by Jenning S. Cox. The story goes like this. While he was entertaining guests one night, he ran out of the gin everyone was enjoying. He went out and purchased the easiest liqueur he could find, which was rum adding lemons, sugar, mineral water, and ice to the rum. He turned it into a punch 
for his guest. They love it and wanted to know what the name of it. He did not have a name for it. It should have been called a Ramsar according to conventions of the day. Cox did not feel that was very good enough for such a fine drink. So, he named it for the nearby beach and called it Daikiri. Did you know that it is one of the six basic drinks listed in David A. Embury's classic? A fine art mixing drink. Refund is orange. A bomb shot typically consists of a shot glass of hard liquor that is dropped into a glass partially filled with beer but sometimes with some other beverage. Many variations exist. When the shot is dropped into a super mint, it is commonly known as a deep depth charge because it resembles the anti-submarine weapon being dropped on a target. The term has become more loosely defined as simply a shot that is made by mixing two drinks. That is profundity charge. Next is props. This mind-blowing dessert cocktail mixes up rum chata, vodka, coffee liquor, iced coffee, whipped cream, and chocolate syrup. And if this chocolate mix drink sounds like one of the tastiest cocktails ever, that's because it most definitely is. Did you know that Octo 7th of October is the National Prop Day? Next is the Gibson. It is a martini mixed drink decorated with a little white onion. According to one theory, it was invented by Charles Dana Gibson, who created the, mo the popular Gibson Girl illustrations. Supposedly, he challenged Charlie Connolly, the bartender of the Players Club in New York City, to improve upon a martini. Did you know that gin is the original and the most correct spirit to use in martini? And vodka martinis may be as commonly ordered as gin martinis these days, but if you're after a traditional people, Gin is simply the correct choice, though if you want a touch of both, a Vesper is certainly acceptable. The next is the Gimlet. The name Gimlet likely came from one of two sources. A Gimlet is a handheld drill for boring holes and would have likely been used on Royal Navy ships. The drink could have been named for its Pursing effect on the sailors. The name also could have come from the naval surgeon Sir Thomas Gimlet, who may have come up with the drink as what they combat to Scarville. The next is the Harvey Wallbanger. There's a widely circulated story that this 1970s drink made with vodka, orange juice, and galliano was made created by bartender Donato Duke Anton at his Los Angeles bar. The Black Watch for a surfer named Tom Harvey. Harvey supposedly got so drunk, he started running into the walls, hence the drink's name. Is highball. It is near impossible to be certain, however, especially since bartender Part Patrick Duffy from New York believed it was the American actor E.J. Radcliffe who first brought the highball to the United States from England in 1894. The name may refer to the practice of serving drinks in tall glasses or to the dining cars of trains powered by steam locomotives. 
where engine would get up to speed and the ball and that showed boiler pressure was at its high level known as high balling. Next is the Irish Espresso. The Irish coffee was created in the winter of 1943 by Joey Sheridan, chef at Fulman's Port near in Limerick, Ireland. Fulman's was an airbase for transatlantic flights at the time that often carried political or Hollywood figures. The airbase was usually just a stopover for longer flights to refuel and often due to weather, passengers would need to stay for that night and a new restaurant was created to cater to these dignified passengers. One evening, a flight had to turn back to Fona's airbase air midway through its journey. Chef Joe Saridan Feeling empathy for the delayed, cold, and weary passengers decided to whip up something special for them to drink. The story goes that a silence descended as everyone enjoyed this delectable concoction. My Thai The Mai Tai started as a rum cocktail so popular it supposedly delicted world rum supplies in the 1940s and 50s. In 1944, when the cocktail was invented by Victor J. Bergeron, better known as Trader Vic, it wasn't a sugar bomb. It was a simple drink created to a showcase of pungent flavor of a 17-year-old J. Rory and nephew Jamaican rum. Bergeron highlighted the golden medium bodied rum with just a touch of lime, orange, curacao, and simple syrup. According to legend, after shaking the concoction with ice and presenting the cocktails to some of his visiting Tahitian friends, they ended up liking it so much of them exclaimed, my Thai row eye, which translate to out of this world, the best. Bergeron christened his new cocktail, My Thai is in the best. Did you know that it's not really supposed to be sweety sweet? While bastardized over the years, the Mai Thai is quite a dry, crisp, and boozy cocktail says Megan Dorman of Dear Irving in New York City. Texture, however, is another matter. Her tweak version includes lime juice, orget, clement crawl, shrub, rum, appleton estate reserve blend Jamaican rum, the riches and almond fat of the orget lengthens the finish and makes it rounder, she says. The heat of rum agricole adds a fresh grassy funk to the richer Jamaican rum, keeping it dynamic. Manhattan Manhattan are many theories to know the story about the most popular of this is that in the early 1880s, Dr. Lane Marshall came up with the recipe for a party that was held at the Manhattan Club in New York City by Lady Randolph Churchill, Winston's mother. Many people in the industry now believe that this story is a myth and that at the time, Lady Randolph Churchill was pregnant with Winston. At, and at home in England, therefore, not partying in New York, some... Some now think that a man going by the name of Block invented the cocktail at the famed Hoffman house in New York City. Whichever story you choose to believe, the Manhattan Club still lays claim to the ownership of the recipes to, to this very day. And the cocktail is still widely available in bars, restaurants, cafes throughout the world that and is regarded by many bartenders as one of the best cocktails to ever have been served. 
Did you know that Manhattan is tiered? Margarita. Another top contender for the inventor title is the Margarita Saints, a wealthy Dahlia socialite, socialite who claimed was whipped up the drink for France at her Acapulco vacation home in 1948. Among her well-connected guests was Tommy Hilton, who eventually added the drink to the bar menu at his hotel chain. According to the Complete Book of Spirit by Anthony Diaz Blue, though the first importer of Jose Cuervo in the United States advertised with the tagline, Margarita, it's more than a girl's name, in 1945, three years before Saints claimed to have invented the drink. Did you know that Margarita means Daisy in Spanish? Martini. Truth be told, no one knows exactly the origin of the martini. However, there is a general theory that most people have come to accept. The story holds that the drink evolved from Martinez, which in turn comes from the Manhattan. In the early 1860s, people frequented the Occidental Hotel in San Francisco for a glass of cocktail before taking an evening ferry to the nearby town of Martinez. Another legend claims that the cocktail may have gotten its name when an Italian Vermont maker started marketing their product under the brand name of Martini in 1863. After its director Alessandro Martini, in another account, it was named for the Martini and Henry Rayfall, used by the British Army for 20 years between 1870 and 9, 1890. Both the Rayfall and the drink delivered a strong kick. James Bond fans will conform, confirm that the fictional character has done much for the popularity of the Martini cocktail. Despite drinking martini only once in Ian Fleming's James Bond book, the fictional British secret agent has been improved the marketability of the cocktail, even making the popular phrase shaken, not stirred. Did you know that the classic martini is made with gin, not with vodka? Moscow Dance Donkey Sophie walked into the Cock in Bull pub at just the right time on the right day in 1941 to help create a cocktail America would fall in love with. John Martin had purchased the floundering Smirnoff Vodka Distillery. Yes, that is Smirnoff. In 1930s, though, he was successful as the head of the G.S. Hildrin in Brothers a foods and spirit important that made steak sauce popular. He wasn't as fortunate with vodka. Americans had no interest in vodka, beer, whiskey, and other cocktails ruled the roost of America at this time. Jock Morgan was in a similar bind as owner of the Cock and Bull. He was trying to introduce Americans to his own brand of ginger beer. The two men were already good friends when they met at Morgan's pub to drone their hoos. As the duo lamented their lackluster sales as sought redemption for their respective products, in walked Sophie with her solid copper mugs. Did you know that the two entrepreneurs mixed vodka with ginger beer and a dash of lemon juice to create a Moscow meal? The idea behind the Moscow meal came about when the owner of the Cock and Bull Saloon in Los Angeles was heard complaining about not being able to ship his stock of ginger beer. Overhead by John Martin, an employee of Hubbin and Co., whom owned the right 
Princess Mary of Vodka on the West Coast. Singapore Sling A Singapore Sling was the go-to cocktail for ladies at the start of the 20th century. The drink is the leggy, vibrant pink damsel with a fruity taste and a midsummer vibe. Garnish with a just cherry for the high society vibe or tone down with fancy pants look like a cocktail umbrella and sparkly straw your drink your car next is the zombie the zombie cocktail first appeared in 1934 invented by don beach at his hollywood don the beach chamber restaurant it was popularized on the east coast soon afterwards in at the 1939 New York World's Fair. Legend was it. Legend has it that he originally concocted the cocktail to help a hungover customer get through a business meeting. The customer returned several days later to complain that he had turned into a zombie for his meeting. The drink fruity taste conceals its extremely high alcoholic content. Actually, Don, the beach chamber restaurant limit the customers to two zombies apiece because of their potency. Prepare and mix cocktails and non-alcoholic drinks. Great mixers for vodka. The Mule. It's an owl brewed with lime and ginger, hazy copper in color with an off-white head mule beer pours with strong aromas of ginger and tangy lime soda water it's called carbonated water sparkling water seltzer or soda water the liquid is all the same and it's perfect mixer for vodka the water helps cut the spirit strength without diluting flavor while the effort while the effervescence adds just a little extra to a cocktail. Next is the tonic water. One of the quintessential mixer. No bar is complete without it. A tonic water can be used without with nearly any spirit but is most notable for its pairing rules in drinks like vodka tonic. The cranberry juice. In a pinch cranberry juice and vodka are all that you need for a simple yet effective drink. Lime Lemon Soda For a little more sweetness. Using as simple as a bit of citrus juice will will leaven your vodka right up. If you can freshly squeeze your juices, all that better. Pineapple Juice Vodka isn't often associated with tropical cocktails since most are left to rum or tequila, but a pour of tropical fruit with a splash of vodka is as cool as an ocean breeze. Make your perfect cocktail. Use the drink ratio when mixing 1 is to 1 is to 3 ratio with alcohol to flavoring to seltzer low calorie liquid. 1 part of alcohol, 1 part of sour, 3 parts of Sweet. What's good with vanilla vodka? Vanilla vodka is a versatile spirit for cocktails with clean flavors that combine well with many mixers. Vanilla brings a mellow sweetness to vodka cocktails, while vodka has a clean, pure taste that plays well with other ingredients. Five classic cocktails. The Mojito Mojito is a traditional Cuban highball. Traditionally, a Mojito is a cocktail that consists of five ingredients. White rum, sugar, lime juice, soda water, and mint. Its combination of sweetness, citrus, and herbaceous mint flavors is intended to complement the rum and has made the Mojito a popular summer drink. The next is the margarita. It's a cocktail consisting of tequila, orange liqueur, 
and lime juice often served with the salt on the rim of the glass. The drink is served shaken with ice, blended with ice, or without ice. The next is the dark and stormy. is a highball cocktail made with gosling black steel rum and ginger beer served over the ice, garnished with a slice of lime. Lime juice and simple syrup are also, also frequently added. The drink is very similar to most meal, except the dark and storm has dark rum instead of vodka. Next is martini. It's called a cocktail made with gin and vermouth. The garnish with an olive or a lemon twist. Over the years, the martini has become one of the best known mixed alcoholic beverages. Men can call the martini the, martini, the only American invention as perfect as the sonnet. Mint julep is a mixed alcoholic drink or cocktail consisting primarily of bourbon, sugar, water, crush or shave ice, and fresh mint. As a bourbon-based cocktail, it is associated with the American South and the cuisine of the South turn United States in general and the Kentucky thereby in particularly. Cocktail glasses to buy. Snaps glass is designed by glassware designer Tom Nibro with the focus on a unique aromatic experience and a classic design that rounded shape ensures that the snaps around remains in the classic giving you the best possible aromatic experience. The old-fashioned glass, rock glass, low ball glass is a short tumbler used for serving spirits such as whiskey, neat or with ice cubes. It is, all, it is also normally used to serve certain cocktails such as the old-fashioned from which it receives its name. The next is the cordial glasses, are used to serve after dinner liqueurs and dessert wines, though the actual bowl of the steamware is about the same size as the shot glass. The alcohol served in it meant, meant to be sipped. The cordial glass bowl, smaller than that one, of a wine glass is also used to regulate or limit the amount of alcohol each guest is served. And the dainty glass dessert design makes for great dinner party presentation flair. Highball glass is a glass tumbler used to serve tall cocktails and other mixed drinks that contain a large proportion of non-alcoholic mixers and are poured over ice. It is often used interchangeably with the Collins glass, although the highball glass is shorter and wider in shape. Again, this is the highball glass. The Sour glass, also known as the Monaco glass, has a rounded cup with a stem specified for sweet citrus drinks such as whiskey sour. The margarita glass is a type of cocktail glass that is designed specifically for serving the tequila-based drink. A cocktail glass or a steamed glass with an inverted cone bowl mainly used to serve straight-up cocktails. The term cocktail glass is often used interchangeably with martini glass, despite their differing slightly, a shot glass, originally designed to hold or measure spirits or liquor, which is either imbibed straight from the glass. Next is the Collins glass, a glass tumbler which typically will contain 300 to 410 millimeters. It is used to serve mixed drinks, especially Tom Collins or John Collins cocktails. It is a cylind cylindrical in shape and narrower and taller than highball glass. 
The next is the champagne glass, a form of steamware designed specifically to enhance the drink of champagne. The two most common forms are the flute and the coke. In each, the stem allows the drinker to hold the glass without affecting the temperature of the drink, making them readily adaptable to consuming other sparkling wines and, and certain beers. beers rather. Champagne can also be drunk for, from a normal wine glass, which allows better appreciation of the flavor at the expense of executing the bubble glass. Non-alcoholic beverages can be categorized into soft drinks and hot beverages. When we say soft drinks, are drinks which do not have an alcohol such as carbonated drink, tonic water, fruit punch, sparkling water, and among others. And when we say hot beverages, it includes popular beverages such as coffee and tea. Non-alcoholic drink, an alcohol-free and an alcoholic drink, also known as a temperance drink, is a version of an alcoholic drink made without alcohol or with the alcohol removed or reduced to almost zero. Eight delicious non-alcoholic pub drinks. Fresh lime soda, the supreme quencher of colonial thirst in India. The Fox Regiana, the French classic without the alcohol, just half spirit, half orange juice. Gunner, as a cocktail served in clubs, bars, golf clubs, especially those popular with expats in Singapore, Hong Kong, and other parts and the Far East and India formerly under British colonial rule. It consists of equal parts ginger beer or lemonade and ginger ale with a dash of uh, angostura bitters with sometimes a measure of lime cordial or lemon juice. The gunner has been described as the only real Hong Kong cocktail. The next is the cranberry juice is the liquid juice of the cranberry typically manufactured to contain sugar, water, and other fruit juices. Cranberry, a fruit native to North America, recognized for its bright red color, unique tart taste, and versatility of product manufacturing. Next is the non-alcoholic beer. A low-alcohol beer is a beer with little or no alcohol content and aims to produce the taste of beer without inhibiting effects of standard of alcoholic brews. Most low alcohol beers are larger, but there are some low alcohol ales. Next is the tonic water. Tonic water is a carbonated soft drink in which quin is dissolved. Originally used as a pro prophylactic against malaria, tonic water usually now has a significantly lower quinine content and is consumed for its distinctive bitter flavor, though it is nowadays also often sweetened. The Virgin Mary It is a Bloody Mary without an alcohol. Next is the lemonade with salt ring. Simulating beverages. Coffee and tea. Many people drink these beverages not only for their flavor but also for the boost they provide. Of these beverages, coffee, tea, and cocoa are the most abundant worldwide. These beverages are stimulating because they all include the major central nervous system stimulant caffeine.
refreshing drinks after refreshing drinks again water is the best thirst quencher but sometimes you want a little bit extra in terms of variety of flavor delicious fruit juices juices or tea based drinks provide refreshing alternative to regular drinks Refreshing beverages can be water and syrup. Nourishing beverages. They provide you with extra energy and calories as well as fluid to keep you hydrated, such as milk and malt-based drink. The non-alcoholic beverages. The water. Is the basic beverages on the planet and also most important. Without water, all of us could die. Since we are composed of more than 70% of water, it makes sense that staying hydrated is important. Next is the milk. Milk is produced from the mammary glands of certain animals, high in minerals and unique compounds that can help build strong bones and improve immunity. Next is the tea. Tea is an aromatic beverage that's commonly prepared by pouring hot or boiling water over cured or fresh leaves in the Camellia census, an evergreen shrub native to East Asia. The coffee. A brewed drink prepared from a roasted coffee beans, the seeds of berries from certain coffee species. When coffee berries turn from green to bright red in color, indicating ripeness, they are peak, processed, and dry. Soft drinks. A soft drinks is a drink that usually contains carbonated water, a sweetener, and a natural or artificial flavoring. The sweetener may be sugar or high fructose corn syrup, fruit juice, and sugar substitute, or some combination of this. Next is the juices, a drink made with extraction of pressing of the natural liquid contained in fruit and vegetable. It also refers to liquid that are flavored and concentrate or other biological food sources such as meat or seafood such as clam juices. Energy drink. An energy drink is a type of drink containing stimulant compounds, usually caffeine, which marketed as providing mental and physical stimulation. They may or may not be carbonated and may also contain sugar, other sweeteners, herbal extracts, taurine, and amino acid. Mocktails, a mixture of two or more juices and other soft drinks. It derives its name from mimicking cocktails. Thus, the word mock, some also prefer clean it, punch or virgin cocktail. Milkshake. A milkshake or a simple shake is a drink that is usually made by blending milk, ice cream, and flavorings or sweeteners such as butterscotch, caramel, sauce, chocolate syrup, fruit syrup, or whole fruit into a thick, sweet, cold mixture. The smoothies. A smoothie is a drink made from pureed raw fruit or vegetable, typically using a blender. A smoothie often has a liquid base such as water, fruit juice, plant milk, and sometimes dairy products such as milk, yogurt, ice cream, or cottage cheese. Next is the cocoa, hot chocolate also known as drinking chocolate cocoa, and as chocolate tea in Nigeria, is a heated drink consisting of shaved chocolate, melted chocolate or cocoa powder, heated milk or water, and usually sweetener. Hot chocolate may be topped with whipped cream or marshmallow. The tonic water, a tonic water is a carbonated soft drink in which quinine is dissolved. Originally used as a prolactic against malaria, tonic water usually now has a significant lower of 
though it is nowadays also often sweetened. So, let's proceed now to the alcoholic beverages. Alcoholic beverages is a drink that contains ethanol and ethyl alcohol, such as beer, wines, and spirits. All starts with a process that called a fermentation, which is natural result of yeast, digestion of sugar found in ingredients like fruit, cereal, grains, or other starches. Spirits are specifically core that are created have special flavors. The term spirit re refers to a certain distilled beverage that has no added sugar and that has at least 20% alcohol by volume or ABV. Once alcohol is distilled, it becomes a spirit. The process of distilling alcohol is called fermentation. The most popular kinds of spirit are brandy, gin, tequila, vodka, and whiskey. Spirits are created by the concentrating the alcohol in a ferment liquid by distilling it to become sweeter or for it to become flavored. Usually, the concentration of the alcohol in spirits range from 37% to 43%. At first, Spirits are not sweet, but when they go through fermentation, gradually the taste starts to form. But as compared to liquor, spirits are less sweet. Whiskey Whiskey is a type of distilled alcohol beverage made from fermented grain mash. Various grains are used for different varieties including barley, corn, rye, and wheat. Whiskey is a typical age in wooden cask, generally made of charred white oak. Scotch whiskey Scotch whiskey is malt whiskey or grain whiskey or blended of the two. Made in Scotland, Scott whiskey must be made in a manner specified by law. As of 2018, there were 133 Scotch whiskey distilleries operating in Scotland. Scott whiskey is divided into five distinct categories. Single malt Scotch whiskey, single grain Scotch whiskey, blended, a blended malt Scotch whiskey, formerly called vat malt or pure malt blended grain scotch whiskey, and blended scotch whiskey. Irish whiskey is whiskey made an island of Ireland. The word whiskey comes from the Irish use bratha, meaning water of life. Irish whiskey was once of the most popular spirit in the world. Though a long period of decline from the late 19th century onwards greatly damaged in the industry. So much so that although Ireland boasted over 30 distilleries in 1890s, a century later this number had fallen to just three. Irish whiskey has seen a surge in popularity since the late 20th century and has been the fastest growing spirit in the world ever every year since 1990. The Canadian whiskey are most typically blends of whiskies made from a single grain, principally corn or dry, but also sometimes wheat or barley. The base whiskey are distilled between 18 are between 180 to 190 proof, which results in a few congener by products and creates a lighter taste. 
the Japanese whiskey. A style of whiskey developed and produced in Japan. Whiskey production in Japan began around 1870, but the first commercial production was an was in 1924. Upon the opening of the country's first distillery, distillery Yamazaki. Broadly speaking, the style of Japanese whiskey is more similar to that the Scotch whiskey than the other major styles of whiskey. Next is the gin, a distilled alcoholic beverage that derives its predominant flavor from juniper berries. Gin is one of the broadest categories of spirits. All of various origin styles and flavors profiles that revolve around juniper as a common ingredient. Rum Rum is by fermenting and then distilling sugarcane molasses or sugarcane juice. The distillate a cured liquid is usually aged in oak barrels. Most rum are produced in Caribbean and American countries, but also in other sugar-producing countries such as Philippines and India. We have types of rum. The light-bodied, heavy-bodied, medium-bodied. The white rum is clear, usually has milder flavor and lighter body than gold or dark rum. This light rum are most often used to create cocktails that do not have a need of bold rum flavor. In the U.S., most white rums are sold at 80 proof or 40% alcohol volume. The darkest, richest, heavy-bodied rums are often referred to as black rums, offering bold tropical essence to libation and recipes. Black types of rum are popular ingredients used to balance the flavor of drinks against gold, white, and spice rum. Most rum made from molasses, a thick, dark, sweet liquid left over in the process of manufacturing crystallized sugar. The black rums retain much of this rich molasses and caramel flavor and are sometimes colored with burnt caramel to achieve consistency dark truth. Next is the bod the medium bodied, a rum that is formed from the Virgin Islands. Vodka is a clear distilled alcoholic beverage with different varieties originating in Poland and Russia. It is composed primarily of a water and ethanol, but sometimes with traces of impurities and flavoring. Traditionally, it is made by distilling the liquid from cereal grains that have been fermented with potatoes, arising as the substitutes at more recent times. And some modern brands using fruit or sugar as the base. Since the 1890s, standard vodkas have been 40% alcohol by volume. The European has established a minimum alcohol content of 37.5%. For vodka. Brandy is a liquor produced by distilling wine. Brandy generally contains 35 to 60% alcohol by volume or 70 to 120 US proof and is typically consumed as an after dinner digestive. Some brandies are aged in wooden oak. Other are colored with caramel coloring and estimated the effect of aging and some are produced using a combination of both aging and coloring. Varieties of wine brandy can be found across the winemaking world. Tequila Tequila is a distilled beverage made from the blue agave plant primarily primarily in the area surrounding the city of tequila the northwest of the guadalajara 
and its Jalisco highlands of the central western Mexican state of Jalisco. The, the red volcanic soil in the region Pisquila are well suited to growing the blue agave. And more than 300 million of plants are harvested there each year. Agave grows differently depending on the region. Blue agaves grown in the highlands of Los Altos region are larger than sweeter in aroma and taste. Agave harvested in lowlands and have a more herbaceous fragrance and flavor. So as you can see, that is the agave. Next, the liquor. The second alcoholic beverages, the liquor. A liquor is an alcoholic drink composed of distilled spirit and additional flavorings such as a sugar, fruit, herbs, and spices, often served with or after dessert. They are typically heavy, sweetened, and unaged beyond a resting period during production, when necessary for their flavor to mingle. The beer. The third alcoholic beverage. Beer is one of the oldest and the most widely consumed alcoholic drink in the world, and the third most popular drink overall after water and tea. Beer is brewed from cereal grains, most commonly from malted barley, though wheat, maize, or the corn, and rice are also used. During the brewing process, fermentation of the starch sugars in the wort produces ethanol and carbonation in the resulting of beer. Next is the wine, the fourth alcoholic beverage. Wine is an alcoholic beverage typically made from fermented grapes. Yeast consumes the sugar in the grapes and converts it to ethanol, carbon dioxide, and heat. Different varieties of grapes and strings of yeast produce different styles of wine. This variation results from the complex interaction between the biochemical development of the grape, the reaction involved in the fermentation, the grapes growing environment and the production process. Next is the types of wine. Steel or natural wines. Referred to as stable wines, they come in three colored red, white, and rosé. Next is that aromatic wine. In wine tasting, the term aromatic refers to a wine which has had the time or natural ability to emit several aromas. An aromatic wine is one which opens up the emits different perfumes and or bouquet on the nose, the palate, and in the finish. It is a wine which is seemingly endless in the different and variety of notes it can emit from floral essence to fruits to herbs and earthy notes. Fortified Wines A fortified wine is a delicious, vicious wine-based sipping treat that is often enjoyed as a drink before or after dinner. The most common types of fortified wines are the Madeira, Marsala, Port, Sherry, and Vermouth. These still wines have been fortified with a, with a distilled spirit such as brandy. The original use of fortification was to preserve the wine, or as cask of wine was prone to turn the vinegar during the long sea voyage. The sparkling wine. A wine with significant levels of carbon dioxide in it, making it fizzy while the face commonly refers to champagne. Countries legally Preserve the term for products exclusively produced in the Champagne regions of France. Sparkling wine is usually either white or rosé, but there are examples of red sparkling wine such as Italian Braschetto, Bornada, and Lambrusco, Australian Sparkling, Shiraz, and the Pearl of Azerbaijan. Made of Madras grapes, the sweetness of sparkling wine can range 
from every dry broth styles to sweeter dough varieties. Let's move on to evaluation of wines. There are basically three colors of wine, the red, white, and the pink. The red called the rogue, which when may range anywhere from purple to dark red to burgundy. White, they are also called the Bianc, in varying clarity depending in the grape variety and the aging process. The pink, called the Rose or the Rosé, ranging from pink, salmon, and light rose tone. The Appearance The evaluation of the wine's appearance begins by the evaluating of the limbity or clarity of wine, then its transparency color and finally its fluidity and viscosity the wine's appearance analysis is divided into three different phases in particular the wine will be observed in three different positions each one of them will allow to determine specific characteristics of the wine the glass will be put on the table and by contrasting it with a white surface such as a sheet of paper that contents of a glass will be observed from the top by looking straight to the liquid surface. It must appear brilliant, smooth, and reflective, just like a mirror. In case, the surface will appear opaque or faded. This could be a sign of the presence of defects and faults which develop during wine's bottle storage. The body of the wine. Body describes the texture or weight of the wine in the mouth. This comes from a combination of elements including alcohol, extract, glycerol, and acid. Body is commonly referred to the three ways, full-bodied, medium-bodied, or medium-weight, and light-bodied. There were the wine faults on that spectrum is dependent on the grape variety, alcohol, tannin, sugar, and extract levels. The body of the wine is one of the most important characteristics. Working with the other characteristics of a wine, such as acidity and fruit, body influences the overall impression of a wine. The three ways, the light-bodied wine. A light-bodied wine are characterized by their lean, delicate nature with this is because the ty this type of wine will usually have a light viscosity or consistency akin to lightness or water. This also characterized by their lean delicate nature or phrase of similars and food lovers often shout about don't actually explain. Full bodied wines are often considered the uh, the antithesis to a light-bodied wine, while a light-bodied wine is easy to drink and pairs well with a variety of food. A full-bodied wine is a little heavier with bold tasting notes, complex flavors, and powerful aroma. These wines are typically meant to be steeped over a prolonged period since they are so bold. They, have, they often have an alcohol content over 13.5% percent by volume the medium bodied wine wines are listed last because they fall somewhere in between light and full bodies they typically have an alcohol content between 12 percent to 13.5 percent such medium bodied options to look for while while wine online shopping include merlot Rosé, and Pinot Gras. Next is the wine making process. The wine making or the vinification is the production of wine. Starting with the selection of the fruit, its fermentation into alcohol, and the bottling and the finished liquid of history, history of wine making stretches over Millennia. The science of wine and the winemaking is also the enology, 
a winemaker may also called a vintner. The growing of grapes is the viticulture or the viticulture. And there are many varieties of grapes. The quality of grapes determine the quality of the wine more than any other factors of grapes. The second is the harvest. Although alternative wines closure such as synthetic quartz and screw crops which are less subject to corting are becoming increasingly popular. The final step is adding the capsule to the top of the bottle which is the heated for tight seal that is under the bottling, labeling, and dispatch. Wine and food pairing. List of wine and food pairings. First is the Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc is a green skin grape variety that originates from the Bordeaux region of France. The grape most likely gets its name from the French words Sauvage and Blanc due to its early origins as indigenous grape in southwest France. It is possibly a descendant of Stavin. Food pairings Goat Goat cheese White meat, including including chicken, pork chop, and turkey. Fish, including tilapia and sea bass. The Chardonnay is a green skin grape variety used in production of white wine. The variety originates the Burgundy wine region of eastern France, but is now grown wherever wine is produced from England to New Zealand. Food pairings. Pair Chardonnay with meaty fish and shellfish, such as lobster, shrimp, crabs, scallops, halibut, and cod. Pair Chardonnay with subtly flavored, simply seasoned poultry and pork dishes. Do complement oaky Chardonnay with foods that has Toasty flavor as from toasted nuts, pastry crust, and grilling or smoking. Next is wrestling. Wrestling are wines, a white grape wine, which originate in the Rhine region. Wrestling is an aromatic grape variety displaying flowery almost perfumed aromas as well as a high acidity. It is used to make a dry, semi sweet, sweet, sparkling white wines. Wrestling are usually varietally pure and are seldom oak. Food pairings. German wrestling are known as for pairing well with likes of food, a Chinese food, Cajun cuisine, Tex-Mex, Roasted pork, roasted duck, or goose, seafood, Thai food, and even salad dressing with hard to pair ingredients like vinegar. The next is the Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is a red wine grape variety of species, Vitas vinifera. The name may also refer to wines created predominantly from Pinot Noir grapes. The name is derived from the French word for pine and black. The word pine alludes the grape variety having tightly clustered pine cone shaped bunches of fruit, food pairings, hams, and other cold meats. Classic French dishes with light creamy sauces such as rabbit, kidneys with a mustard sauce, goat cheese, grilled asparagus, spring vegetables, such as peas. Next is the Syrah, also known as Shiraz. 
Shiraz is a dark skin variety grown throughout the world and used primarily to produce red wine. In 1999, Shiraz was found to be offspring of two obscure grapes from southeastern France. Food pairings. Airs very well with grilled meats, vegetables, wild game, and beef stew. Ducks is the Merlot. A dark blue colored wine grape variety that is used of both a blending grape and a four varietal wines. The name Merlot is thought to be a diminutive of Merle, the French name for the blackbird, probably a reference to the color of a grape. Food pairings Merlot pairs well with chicken and other light meats as well as lightly spiced dark meats with medium tannin and not too much acidity. You'll find Merlot pairs well with many foods. Juicy, cooler climate Merlot wines pairs with roasted vegetables. Next is the Carbonet Sauvignon. One of the world's most widely recognized red wine grapes variety. It is grown in nearly every major wine producing country among a diverse spectrum of climates from Canada's Okanagan Valley and Lebanon's Beka Valley. Food pairings best with nearly all red meat including prime rib, New York strip, and filet mignon. Also try lamb or pepper crusted ahi tuna. The wine is best enjoyed with food that, and is great in sauces or reduction. Why, why, why red wine paired with steak? Because molecules called tannins soften the fat in the meat to release its flavor. We have seven rules to per for perfect pairing. Serve a dry rosé with hors d'oeuvres. Serve an uncooked white wine white with anything you can squeeze a lemon or lime on try low alcohol wines with spicy foods much rich red meats with tannic reds lighter meats pair the wine with the sauce choose earthy wines with earthy foods for dessert lighter wine is best how do you serve red wine Red wine should be served cool 60 to 70 degrees. Serving it cool is the best way to enjoy it. To cool red wine to its proper temperature, we like to place it in the fridge an hour before serving it. Which side do you serve wine? When pouring a wine, the guest should see the label of the wine in every moment. Only with his consent, the wine can be served to other guests. And after to that to himself, a sommelier came to the guest from the right side, keeping his left hand behind his back. How to decant, decant a wine? Let's watch this. Why do we decant? To expose the wine to oxygen, sometimes you need to remove sediment, and it's super classy. There are many types of decanters you can use. The most popular types of decanters are classic style, captain's decanter, decanters for special occasion. In fact, anything can be a decanter.
with aged wine, there can often be sediment. So you need to gently pour it into the decanter and keep an eye through the neck of the bottle. And once you start to see sediment coming out, you stop pouring. And that's how you decant wine. So now let's proceed to wine folds. A wine fold or defect is an unpleasant characteristic of a wine often resulting from poor winemaking practice or storage condition and leading to wine spoilage. Port wine. Warning. Sniff the dusty aromas of wheat, wet pay newspaper and damp basement and dull muted fruit cause PCA develops when the plant panels from cork tree bark are exposed to chlorine and common sterilizer. Taster make mistake mutinous from the forest floor in mushroom notes called sios bios by the French or the confuse it for oxidation or other out of condition problems. Fault line, critical. While cork taint is physically harmful to drinkers, it is can easily render a wine undrinkable. Fault line, subjective. A bottle may be past its prime to wine, wine to one wine lover, but characterful to another. Let your taste buds guide to you. The next is the oxidation. Warning signs. Look for ruddy, brownish white that may smell for of sherry or cider, or brick orange reds that seem flat and lifeless. Of course, oxidation is a common consumer complaint. It can be begin during the winemaking storage or within hours of bottle opening the bottle. Also ask your bartender which day he or she opened that by the glass pour. Packaging may also be the cause. Fault line. Moderate. Oxidation presents itself in degrees of intensity, but if color, aroma, and flavor loss are severe, considered making vinegar. Cook and the motorized. Warning signs, taste for roasted stewed or jammy reds with prune or raisin flavor or white that are brown or brown, nutty and sherry like a not it tasty way. Cause prolonged exposure to heat of a series of temperature spikes can cook a wine, also known as maturation. For, for the process used to make Madeira, few wines can tolerate the treatment. Fault line, severe. If a wine has been cooked enough to not eat, use as bracing liquid instead. The volatile acidity, known as VA. Warning signs, smells ranging from the whiff of acetone or nail polish to downright vinegar. Cause all wines has volatile acidity, its presence only becomes problematic at higher detectable levels. This typically occurs after the bacteria that produce it runs wild in the winery. Those germalines known as the actidobacter can turn white can turn wine into vinegar. Combine the alcohol and oxygen, they can keep VA into unpleasantness. Some winemakers use as a 
a cool a tool to bring complexity or a high toned notes to their wines. Fault line moderate, determined case by case. At a lower levels, the volatile acidity adds complexity. At high levels, it ruins a wine fruit flavor. A reduction. Warning signs from struck match to garlic, rubber, and rotten eggs occurs during the winemaking process when a wine's limited exposure to air leads to volatile sulfur, sulfur compounds. Fault line, mild. It is highly unusual to get a whiff of rotten eggs from a commercial winery. For milder forms, just decant for an hour or toast in a clean copper penny.